Hey everybody and welcome back. In this video we have, uh, we're back doing interviews and uh, this is a special one. We have Canada's own uh, Tom Guest from the LA Ironman. Welcome to the channel Tom, how are you? Good man, uh, thanks Thanks again for having me on. I'm doing well, trying to stay warm, you know, trying to stay active uh, in the cold Canadian winter but uh, the season should be starting up soon. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait for the season. It feels... Uh, I forget what they posted. It was for Las Vegas, but it, it feels like forever since uh, paintball has been going. So, yeah, I've got a little timer on my phone, <clears throat> like a countdown. I think it's we're under fifty days until the event. Perfect. It's a, it's a good motivator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I'm feeling feeling lazy, just to look at that and be like, all right, hey, we're getting there. Yeah. So uh, we'll jump right in. Uh, in total, not your pro career, in total, how many years have you been playing paintball? Uh, so I started playing competitive paintball in would have been like eighth grade. So I would have been 13 years old. I'm 31 now. That puts me at 18 years of tournaments. And I don't think I really took any time off uh, during those 18 years. COVID was, was the exception, but kind of an involuntary <laughs> step back from it. So... Yeah, about 18 years competitively and uh, maybe a year or two prior to that, just, you know, playing rec ball, had to get my feet wet with it. But, yeah, I've been around for a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And uh, how many years have you been pro? I believe I've been pro for four years. I uh, went pro in 2019 with San Diego Aftermath. We won the overall spot in, in semi-pro and, uh, and made that bump up. Nice. It actually might have been 2018, but I'm pretty sure it's four years. Four years. Yeah. Um, could you give us a little, uh, quick little rundown of uh, what teams you played and like what teams did you come up on? And then uh, you just gave us a little tidbit of how you became pro. Um, how did that kind of all transpire? Yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of a long answer. Um, some of the, one of the teams that I came up with, um, where we, we saw a lot of success. I played on a ton of different teams, but the main team would be uh, Distortion, and that was predominantly a, a Chicago-based team for, for quite some time. Uh, some of those guys stepped away from the sport, and myself, Scott Graham, Drew Guppy, uh, Mitch Findlay, and, and Garrett Baldwin, a couple Canadian guys who ended up kind of taking the reins over and uh, starting our own started our own Canadian rendition of Distortion. Uh, so I think we won a World Cup in... In 2016, uh, we were a team for a few years. That kind of fell apart, and uh, a few of us ended up going over to uh, SD Aftermath when that team was rebuilt. We played with them for about two or three seasons. Um, and what was the question? What teams have I played on in my pro career, or just kind of in general, what teams? In, in I kind of lost, in, lost track there. In general, yeah. in, in both, like coming up and pro and all that. Pretty much, yeah, you're, you're like paintball resume. <laughs> yeah yeah distortion was a big one um just prior to that too i gotta i guess shout out uh rochester rhythm and buddy bauer he put together a camp we played a uh, psp with that team saw some success but yeah it was uh kind of rhythm distortion uh that led into um playing with sd aftermath played with them for a little bit um work really got in the way near the end of um, that first pro season with SD aftermath. And I was kind of on the fence about what I wanted to do with paintball uh, and just kind of like life in general. And um, coincidentally, right after that COVID happened, didn't play a lot of paintball that year. Wasn't sure if I was going to continue playing. And um, I'm good friends with uh, Frank Tomaso, who played on aftermath and he was on rebel at the time. So he reached out, they needed a guy for world cup, uh, kind of snuck away from work <laughs> Peak COVID, I'm not at that job anymore, so <laughs> I let that out. But yeah, I told him I was uh, taking a vacation, snuck off to Florida, played a World Cup with Revo, and I feel like we got fifth, something like that. We did we did pretty well. Um, had a nice roster there. The next season, um, again, it was more COVID stuff. I, I just didn't play. There were tournaments taking place, but paintball at that time wasn't a, a big priority for me, and um that kind of leads into the X Factor story. So just randomly, uh, middle of the season, I think X Factor had lost a couple players. I'm not sure what the situation was, but Dimitri Ninos hit me up on Instagram and was kind of asking me what I was doing and if I'd be able to play. Uh, I want to say it was like the, the Texas event or 
might have been Philly right before Cup. And it was like a week or two out. I had some stuff. I the, couldn't move. I'm like, I, I can't make it out. Like, there's just no, there's no way I could. Um, they ended up getting second at that tournament. And then he reached out after that, which I was shocked by. I was like, all right, no way. No way they're going to pick me up after this. But they still need bodies. Uh, picked me up for World Cup. And we ended up uh, getting second. Um, and then I ended up playing with X Factor for the next two seasons and just departed uh, this past off season to, to try something new with Iron Man. Yeah. Kind of a very simple rundown of, uh, of the history. Of what happened, yeah. Well, that pretty much goes into my next question of how it seems a lot easier for American players to become pro. So how, how like you just mentioned there, you just got Instagram messages and people that you knew reached out to you, but how hard was it, especially being Canadian, to uh, get into the pro like world over in the States? Yeah, that's definitely like something that always was on on my mind when I was a kid. I'm like, how how can I do this? Um, like, how how can I make it on a pro team? It seems like such a a daunting feat. And I guess to anyone in a similar situation, it's just like if you really love paintball, you'll keep playing, you'll keep working, you'll you'll get better. You'll you know if you're playing those national tournaments, you'll you'll get that recognition eventually. It takes takes time and, and dedication. I don't think that things really started play to play out for me um, on that side of things until much later in life than I initially imagined. Like I, I didn't go pro until I was 26, 27. Um, and yeah, part, I think partially some of that is, is because of geographic restrictions. It's really hard to, um, I don't know, to make those relationships and just to, to get to national tournaments and all of that. Um, yeah, I think, for, for Canadians and people in like a similar situation, young dudes who want to go pro, it's super important to get into a camp that is playing national tournaments, get those eyes on you um, and just go to all of the different programs and events and things that some, uh, some of the great leaders in our industry are running like the BKI summer camps, you have the paintball combines, you have uh, the one-on-one tournaments you get a lot of eyes on you and a, and a lot of exposure and those opportunities weren't around um when i was younger it was kind of just like just hope you know <laughs> do well and hope somebody notices you um i guess that being said too and it, it building off of the exposure side of things is just be friendly talk to everyone you never know um you know when a spot's going to open up on a team and uh and and what can happen with that yeah so Play national events, get eyes on you, go to as many tournaments as you can, as many events, and just do your best <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, no, that's that's great advice. And, like, the big thing, especially, uh, which I'm sure you know, like, the traveling from Canada is a big thing because we're not subsidized like the States. So to go anywhere from Canada fly, it is so expensive. So, yeah. and you guys, like all the pro guys, that travel and practice all over the world, like, all over the United States. Like one weekend you could be in Florida and next year in Texas. So for sure, for sure. Like for a real long time with, uh, with rhythm and, and distortion, like we weren't, we weren't a funded team. We didn't really have any backing. We would, uh, hop in, uh, Ryan Dowling's Hummer <laughs> and pack five guys in that thing. Like someone would always get stuck sitting on the hard hump seat. And we would drive like 10 hours down uh, to practice Baltimore Revo, or we drive to Chicago. Like we were putting miles on that thing. We were paying for the gas. We were paying for our own own hotel rooms, paying for paint. Like it it was expensive. Um, (laughs) So yeah, yeah, we put in the time for sure. I'm definitely in a place now where um, I'm very fortunate to be given what I am given through Pro Paintball, but just, just know there's years and years and years of me just pumping money into it because it, it's what I love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, have you guys already had a practice, the the new Ironman for uh, 2024? Or you guys have one in the books mm-hmm. ready to go? Yeah. So it's Wednesday night. I'm heading out through or Friday morning. Uh, we've got a practice in, um, in L.A. against <laughs> Dynasty and uh, against Dynasty and Aftermath. So that'll be our first practice, but uh, 
a lot of the guys on the team have have played with each other, know each other pretty well. Like I played with Scott and Mitch. Uh, um, we had Henry and Steven on Revo. I played tournaments with them and uh, in the NXL and also in the CXBL when they came down and played. Just everyone's pretty familiar with one another, so I think that'll uh, that'll benefit us in in terms of just gelling. You know, no one's strangers. Kind of show up, old friends, and uh, get the ball rolling. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, especially with all the moves and everything um, that the, every pretty much almost every team has made this year. I'm really looking forward yeah. to see how everybody looks. The first event, how it comes out. Uh, I'm a little biased. We're a die team as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how the how the Ironman, how you guys make out this year and do uh, with the, the parting of some some players. But you guys seem to, I think you got a, a really good roster going forward this year so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it seeing what you guys can do appreciate it man yeah same here it's uh still have a bunch of bodies got to kind of figure out who's going to fit well where but um uh, but yeah we're excited and uh I'm, I'm hopeful for it something new something exciting and with a couple old friends just change the scenery no bad blood or anything like that with x factor i obviously wish those guys the best I'm still friends with all those dudes and i left that uh uh, on good terms so yeah it's everything's good right now <laughs> which is good no that's great uh so i pretty much have about two questions left and the uh, one of them is uh we come to the point of the interview where it's uh time to sell yourself do you have uh anything going on uh in the paintball world uh do you have products uh clinics anything like that that you're going on that you want to bring up have you been on uh, other podcasts with the other guys that you want to plug or anything? No, I mean, in regards to other podcasts, like if you're not already listening, the, the play the, play the game guys and checking out, uh, let's say Ryan dynasty's weekly show. It's probably going on right now. Uh, check those out. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to promote everyone more. You know, I, I realize how much work goes into every podcast, every show and sharing all that stuff and consuming it. It's just, it's helping to grow the sport, you know, even if you're not a hundred percent on board with maybe who the guest is on, on a show or something like that, just give it a share, share that piece of content and, and get more eyes on, uh, on the sport that we love. But yeah, I guess, um, in, in regards to me and myself and sell myself, whatever you had said there, um, currently I, I do have a YouTube channel. It is, I just gotta see what it is. I'm, <laughs> it's at uh, Tom Guest. And the reason I kind of stuttered there on it because I'm going to be changing the name soon. I recently put up a, a video kind of addressing what's going to happen there. I used to do a lot of vlogs on that channel and uh, I'm still going to be dropping similar content, but essentially I partnered up with uh, with Dimitri Ninos on X Factor and he has a clothing brand called Astra. It's clothing apparel and, uh, and all sorts of stuff like that. But we partnered up um, and the channel will be kind of transitioning over to Astra Paintball and where I come into play there is just assisting with marketing and content creation for the brand. I, I love the stuff. I'm super excited for us to to drop um, the next line of clothing. I can't really say too much about what that's going to be, but we have a ton of stuff in the works, and, uh, and I'm super excited to do that this year. Uh, also, a big shout out to Free Flow Paintball. <clears throat> I just got a text about 20 minutes ago that uh, my Free Flow DSR came in. It was shipped to a teammate so I could have it in time for practice. But shout out to Free Flow and and, uh, and Buddy Bauer. I'm really excited to to show that off this weekend and, and to try that out. Yeah, I guess uh, other than that, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at TomcatPB. I'm I'm pretty uh, active on there. Always messing around. People take my stuff too seriously. Just know I'm usually joking, but yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's perfect. That's uh, that's pretty much the interview. So once again, uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, for doing this. Uh, and I wish you guys all the best. Uh, Ironman, yourself, everything. Wish you all the best uh, this year for the 2024 season and, of course, beyond. And uh, hopefully at some point in time, um, we could do a follow-up in like a year or something, see how it's going, for see sure. how you're liking the Ironman, and go from there. Sounds good, man. I appreciate it. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and make sure you guys uh, stay tuned for the next one.